In this chapter, we're going to look at the graphical representations of data. In this lesson, we're going to look specifically at bar graphs. Okay. Hi, everybody. In this particular lesson, we're going to be looking at bar graphs. And a bar graph is a graph that's used to plot what we call discrete data using rectangular bars. Okay. Um, and what we mean by discrete is it's, is it's countable. Okay. Um, we're talking f like full full objects here. There's no no fractions. So when you're counting people in a room, uh, you don't you don't count fractional people, right? There's all there's always a whole number of of people there. So that's what we're talking about in terms of discrete data. We're talking about countable um, objects. Now, there's uh, what's important to a bar graph is that you've got spaces between the bars. Okay, so if you've got a bar graph that does this, where you, they're right up against each other, we call this a histogram. Okay? So I just want to make sure that you understand like the difference here. So this is a histogram. This is a bar graph. Okay? So what's the difference? Well, a histogram is used to, to graph what we call continuous data. So a continuous data, um, maybe you're, you're talking about um, the heights of, let's say, maybe people, okay? Well, height is a continuous thing. There's a, there's, you can be any particular height, let's say, between, you know, a meter and, and two meters. Every single value in between there, people can be that. So what we do here is we tend to break it up into little groups and then you know, this will be from, from this height to this height, and then from this height to this height. So there's this continual increase in the value there. But with bar graphs, we're talking about data that doesn't necessarily run into each other. So maybe here we're talking about the number of people that like a certain type of ice cream. And so we've got vanilla here, chocolate here, strawberry here, and, and so on. And so the, in the height of the graph represents how many people like that uh, ice cream. Over here, this is the number of people that are that tall in that little category there. But here, the order of the graphs is really important. Here, the order is not so important. Okay, so a bar graph delivers a different type of information than what a histogram might might look uh, deliver here. And our focus right now is going to be on the bar graph. Okay, now something else that you need to consider about the graphs. Okay, just like before with the with the the broken line graphs here, the axes need to be labeled, and the graph needs to have a title. So that sort of stuff stays constant. And remember, it'll be the same thing, okay? We're going to have our independent variable is going to be on the uh, horizontal axis, and our dependent variable is going to be on the, the y-axis there, the vertical axis. Okay, so that sort of thing is, the, that sort of setup is going to be the same for every graph uh, that we look at. Um, unless, of course, there is another version of the bar graph that, that sometimes people use where they, where they flip the whole thing. Um, but it's very clear that they have, that they have done that, like this, the switch has happened. It's not a subtle thing. They're not trying to trick people. It's not meant to be a misleading graph. It's meant just to be another way of, of, of looking at the information here. Anyway, let's take a quick look at an example. Okay, so this question here says, the following gives the population of seven different ma uh, imaginary cities. Display the, uh, display the data. Sorry, that should say data, not the date. The data on a bar graph. Now, I'm just going to take a quick look here. I think there are, uh, no, that's all, that's all good. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take that data and we're going to put it on uh, this, bar gra this uh, graph down here. Now, we're going to have to play with the scale a little bit. We're going to have to figure this out. But before we do that, we need a, uh, a title here. Now, you can... You can kind of see what I had done before, and I had to erase it here, but we're going to take a quick look. This is going to be the population okay, of various cities, and because we're making this thing up here, um, our cities are going to be Oneville, Twoville, Threeville, Fourville, Fiveville, Sixville, Sevenville. Now, this is the information that's going to go on the x-axis, okay, because the cities themselves that's the uh, independent variable. Those are the, the cities that I've chosen. So down here, and then what I've done in the past year is this is going to be Oneville, Twoville, Threeville, Four, Five. I'm kind of just giving myself, you know, uh, 
a two block spa uh, space here for the bar and then a block space in between. And so what we've got here is we've got the cities on the x-axis and then over here we're going to have population um, in and I think what we're going to do here is we're going to go in the th um, actually let's go up here oh that's right it's in the thousands this is in the thousands okay so population in the thousands here but I'm going to go up um, what do we got here I'm going to go up by hundreds here so this will be 100 200, 300, 400, 500, 6, 7, 8, 9. This will be 1,000. So uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1,500. And then 1, 2, 3, 4. And then just up here is going to be our, our 2,000 there. Now, Oneville has a population of 100, uh, sorry, 1,925,000. Okay, so we're looking at a 1.9 million there. And that is actually going to put my graph all the way up just a little bit beyond here. Now, if I would really been careful about that, I'd have chosen a different scale here. So now, we're just going to fill in that little bar. I'll do this quickly. Tuville is at about 1575. So Tuville right up here, 15. Okay, 75 is going to be not quite up to the next line there because I'm going up by hundreds. And then I shade that in. Trying to stay in between the lines. Twoville. Threeville is 857,000. Uh, so that is going to be, well, 800, that's below 1,000 or so. 500, 6, 7, 8. So it's a little bit over like 8 and a quarter there. And then we shade that in. Okay, and again, so you can see that they're distinct. They don't run into each other. It's It's not like... Um, I mean, the way these cities are named, there is an order to them. But I didn't have to put them in that order. That There was no um, really important reason why I, I couldn't have done these things in a different order here. But it does make some more sense to do it this way. Fourville is at 921, so it's going to be just a little bit over the 900 mark here. Fiveville is at 587, so that's going to be down here. 500, and that's going to be just a little bit under the 600 line. Uh, Sixville is 842, so here's 5, 6, 7, 8, so it's going to be just a hair under the halfway mark. And finally, Sevenville is at 654, so 5, 6, and it'll be just a little over the halfway mark. Okay. Now, clearly, I'm I'm just filling in those uh, the shading in really really quickly here, so it doesn't look really great here. I mean, normally you'd spend a little bit more time and clean that up, but there you go. That's what it means to to put something together in a bar graph and make sure that you've got those spaces in between. Those are really important. Okay. And just like I'd mentioned uh, a moment ago here, this is that same graph there, but what we've done is we've flipped and put the the um, independent variable on the y-axis and the dependent variable here along the x-axis. Now, this we can do it like this. It is possible to, to take that and graph and display the information as a horizontal bar graph. And sometimes people like the way that looks better. Um, the information, it's not meant to confuse you in terms of, of confusing the independent and dependent variable. Okay, that's The intention is not to mislead you, like I was saying before here. It's just that this might be a more convenient way of writing it here. Now, in this particular case here, probably, uh, I suspect like it says here, probably the vertical bars kind of look better and communicate what we're trying to communicate a little bit better than the horizontal ones in this particular case. But that's not always true. So this is another option. All right, now let's take a look at a, a couple other ways that we can we can do uh, bar graphs here. So interpreting bar graphs, double bar graphs, and stack bar graphs. So we want to make sure that you've seen some examples of these as well here. Now, in a double bar graph, typically what we're doing is we might have um, information. We've got, let's say, well, I guess the example here is going to be, let's say we've got cities here. We're comparing four cities. 
but we've got two bits of information for each for each city okay and so in this case right here for example maybe we're going to compare the male and female populations for the the cities in a country here so the x-axis is still giving us the city names but we're breaking them up and we've got this little legend up at the top here to identify the number of males and the number of females so and we're, we're shoving those two together. Uh, we didn't really have to put them together like that. They don't need to be. But what that does is that communicates visually that this is one bit of information separated. This is another bit of information and so on. So we've got the dependent variable here, the population on the y-axis, cities on the x-axis. We've got two different colored bars here put together so that we understand that's one city, this is another city, and we're just breaking up the population into, into the different groups here. So that's a, that's a double bar graph. Really useful for displaying maybe like information like this. Um, you might also do something like this if you were breaking it up into age categories, let's say. You might have more than just a double bar graph. You could have like three or four of the bars together and, and so on. But again, grouped together, grouped together for each city. Another, another thing that we might use here are these things called stacked bar graphs. Um, <clears throat> I personally find these ones a little bit more confusing, uh, and I'll explain why in just a second here, but this is another way of doing it. Um, again, we've got two divisions for each, for um, each, well, and again, it could be even more than two divisions, but for right now, two divisions for each entry or each value of the independent variable down here. So along the x-axis, again, we've got the cities, and what we're doing right now with the male and females, we're stacking them on top of each other. Now, where this is more useful is I can see the total population very, very easily by how far up the total stack works. Over here for a double bar graph, it is not obvious to me what the total population is. However, it is clear to me how big each of the groups are. Here, the only group that is clear to me is the males. With the females, I would have to do some subtraction here, the total minus the, the male population. So it kind of depends on what you're, you're trying to communicate here. If the total is important, and what I'm trying to do is give you a, a quick visual of, as to the, the breakup of the two of them, okay, this is pretty good, okay? You get a sense of the distribution of males and females in each, in each of these uh, cities here. Over here, if you're not concerned about the, the total, okay, or communicating the total um, as much, and you're more concerned about like the, the comparison of these two groups, well, this is probably a better, a better way to, uh, to present that information. Anyway, it really depends on kind of what you're trying to accomplish here. So notice that the same graph above can be shown as a stack bar graph, okay? The relative size of the blue, now blue and pink sections, okay, uh, black and gray. Okay, can be used to see how many males and females there are in each city. And the size of the entire bar makes up the total population. Okay, so that's, that's important. You can see the total population coming out of, out of these um, graphs here. Now, what's really important here, and I didn't quite get to this here, is that these are used to display like trends in the data. Okay, we really use those to see overall trends in the data. Really useful for that sort of uh, communication. So now in this question here, we're going to draw a bar graph to show the information in the chart below. So we've got the maximum depths of the Great Lakes. Okay, so here we go. So we're going to write out here the maximum, the max depth of the Great Lakes. Okay, and so the lake is going to be what we're going to put along the x-axis here. That is going to be the independent variable here. And so what I've done, and I had started this before here, just give myself a, a little sense of it. I've given myself three blocks... Okay, three blocks along here to, uh, to put the bars in. And so we're going to put Erie, Lake Huron, Lake Michigan, Lake Ontario, and Lake Superior. Okay, and so these are our lakes. And then over here, we're going to have the depth. Okay, this is the, the dependent variable. The depth depends on which lake we're looking at here. Um, and I don't know, what are we going to go up by here? Well, we got to go up to about... 397 here. Okay. So I think in this case it makes sense to go up by, I think it was 20s that, I, that they went up here. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 100, 4, 6, 8, 200, 4, 6, 8, 300, 
two, four, six, eight, ah, and 400 puts me just up there, but that's okay. So Erie is going to be 64, so that's going to be just, okay, two, four, six, just a hair over my third line there. Okay, Huron, 229, so 200, and remember, I'm going up by 20, so it's going to be a little bit more than that. Okay, come down here real quick. Uh, Michigan, 281, so it's not much bigger than that. So that's 2, 4, sorry, it's 200, then 2, 4, 6, 8. So just a, just a hair bigger than that. Ontario is 236, so 200, two, oh, sorry, 200, 220, so was it 36? So almost up there at 240, not quite. And then the largest one here, Superior, is up at 397. So that's going to be, yeah, would have been nicer if I would had a little bit more control of that. So just a hair under the 400 mark, which is just above my graph. Would have been nicer if I had adjusted my scale a little bit, but that's okay. That's all good. So there we go. So those are our, our Great Lakes and their depths here. Now, there's a couple questions based on this one. So to start off with, according to your bar graph, which lake is the deepest? Well, we, I just showed you. That was the last one we did. That was Lake Superior. And then down here, according to your bar graph, which lake is the shallowest? Well, that one I don't remember off the top of my head. So let's take a quick look. But it's easy to see. Okay, Erie. Clearly, Erie is the shallowest of the lakes there. Okay, so Lake Erie. And then, okay. So in this question right here, we read that the two graphs below show the same information uh, from the chart here. Use the graphs and the chart to answer the following questions here. Okay, so here we go. So we're looking at Olympic game medal winners. Okay, so we're looking at the USSR, uh, Great Britain and Canada for number of gold, silver, bronze. Uh, and this is a kind of a triple bar graph. Down here, this is a stacked bar graph here. And again, showing Canada, Great Britain, USSR, gold, silver, bronze. Um, and then here are just the, is just the data, okay? Let's take a look at some questions here about this. So number one, which graph is better for comparing the total number of medals won by each country? Total number of medals. Well, when you look between the two of them here, this is breaking them up here, but this has them all stacked up together so I can see the totals quite clearly. And the answer here is it's, it's going to be the, uh, the stacked bar graph, okay? So right here, so this is going to be number two, the stacked bar graph. Okay, the length, whoops, I don't know why I wanted to write then. The length gives the totals. So that's all I got to do. I just got to compare the lengths. So for this question, it says which graph is better for comparing the number of silver medals won by each country? I'll explain why. Okay. Well, for this one right here, the number of silver medals is going to be that, that bar in between, okay? And so I, it's very hard for me to determine the width of those things. But if I go up here, notice that the silver medals are all actually compared in this one section right here. So this is USSR, Great Britain, and Canada. It's very easy to see how they, they compare. So in this case here, this is going to be graph number one. Okay, this is going to be the stacked bar graph. Okay, the number of sil silver medals, okay, the silver medals are clearly compared. I mean, that th I have bars that are doing exactly what it's asking me to do here. Now, what is the approximate total number of medals won by the USSR? Okay, well, that's, I can sort of tell from here but I'd have to do some addition here. I'd have to read that off and add those numbers together. Whereas down here, I can, if this is the USSR, I can kind of read this off right here. Now, I know this isn't exactly halfway across here. I know that. Um, but it's close to the middle point here. I might say that this is like the 750 mark right here. So I, let's just take a wild guess. At, let's 700 medals here, okay? So maybe this is going to be 700 medals. I'm not entirely sure. Now, approximately how many more silver medals were won by Great Britain than Canada? Well, I'm going to use this graph right here. 
Great Britain is this middle one, and Canada's down here, the white one. So that's roughly at 200. Canada is roughly at 50. I'm not going to guess any better than that. Roughly at 50. So the difference between them, okay, if we go 200 minus roughly 50, I'm, I'm approximating here, roughly 50, we're looking at about 150 metals. Okay? Approximately, how many more bronze medals were won by the USSR than Canada? So we go over to our graph here, and again, it's easy to see from this one here because the, the bars here are comparing or are communicating the number of medals won. So the USSR won just slightly over 200, and again, Canada was down here at, uh, at approximately 50, so it's really the same calculation. It's going to be approximately 200 minus approximately 50, and once again, it's a, the difference here is about 150 medals. So I hope that helps. Thank you.